Good morning from New York and uh, welcome uh, to a structural hard life case uh, of today from anywhere you may be around the world and thank you for attending our um, monthly programs here. Uh, the, uh, the, this case, as well as previous cases, are at the website you are attending now, ccclivecases.org. And you can also send me any questions you want throughout the, um, throughout the case in order to discuss with the operators and give you answers at info at ccclivecases.org. I'm George Dangas, the moderator, and I'm very uh, happy to uh, uh, introduce our team in the Cardiac Catheters Laboratory. Uh, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Kinney, Dr. Kovacic and others, and Dr. Filsufi, our surgeon, who's gonna, uh, who will uh, present to us a very complex uh, live case of a uh, severe aortic stenosis when porcelain aorta and perform a high risk taver live for you. Let's go to the cardiac cath lab right now. All right, good morning to our structural heart viewers and uh, uh, this is our episode number 20. So knowing that we do every other month, so we are now uh, reaching three, uh, three years plus uh, in our structural program, which we started in October of 2014. Uh, and uh, clearly, the, uh, we got a lot of input uh, from f uh, our viewers, and we continue to uh, uh, incorporate them in our subsequent cases. And biggest demand has been to use the TMVR, uh, sapien valve for the bioprosthetic uh, restenosis. We are looking for ideal case, and hopefully we'll have it. But for that matter, Today we still settle with our uh, high risk or prohibitive risk patient with aortic stenosis, which is the bread and butter. And this whole program of uh, tower has been uh, constantly increasing. And uh, you have seen our team members here. With that note, we'll just uh, start our slide presentation, knowing that we are slightly uh, late here. These are our supporters. Next, uh, the disclosures. Next, the this is a 84-year-old uh, female who has worsening dyspnea on exertion class 3 heart failure, has uh, multiple uh, comorbidities as you can see. And one of the important is the comorbidity in this particular case which we have learned is uh, that uh, if you can just go on the fluoro, and this is where irrespective of your STS score, you can see the porcelain aorta. And we have surgeon here today, Dr. Farjan Ful Sufi, he is the first time uh, uh, more, the, you know, participating in our live uh, conference. Uh, and what would you say about this porcelain aorta, even if STS risk is one or less than one in this particular case with the severe aortic stenosis? Okay, the major risk, of course, in this case is uh, cannulating and cross clamping the aorta, which carries a very high risk of a stroke. Historically, in that group of patients, uh, the minimum risk of a stroke is somewhere between 10 to 15 percent. So most patients have uh, gone away from uh, uh, cross clamping the aorta. So eventually you can do the aortic valve replacement under circulatory arrest, but that also carries a high risk because again, you have to do the suturing of the aorta where with that amount of calcium, you still have a very high risk of uh, stroke. Yeah, I mean, clearly we used to do some balloon valvuloplasties for these cases. And I remember six, seven years ago, one of the similar kind of patient, he ordered some LV apical to aortic, some graft. So what we used to be there, used to do a, cases where you could not yeah, cross clamp some uh, right another lab. alternative would be to do an apical uh, aortic uh, conduit that means you put a conduit at the apex of the uh, left ventricle and then at the middle of the tube you have a valve a biprosthetic valve and then the other end of the uh, tube is grafted to the descending aorta that was done in a limited group of uh, patients uh, in a very high risk uh, group of patients or patients with porcelain aorta but now that we have this alternative of TAVR, I don't think uh, there's uh, much indications for apicoerotic conduit. Yeah, we have not done that in the last six, seven years but for that matter. Let's continue now uh, our uh, presentations of the slide. Uh, patient is on good medication, particularly clopidogrel patient had a PCI, two vessel disease, uh, had a LED uh, synergy about three months ago, and uh, RCA, PDA has a moderate disease, was not intervened and patient has a severe aortic stenosis with the trans thoracic echo, as you can see here. Uh, and uh, we'll ask uh, our uh, echo in charge, uh, Dr. Gila Park, to, to show us live what is we having in the echo. Trans yeah. Trans trans thoracic, yeah. 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 So um, patient had a comprehensive echo exam prior to arriving at the cath lab that demonstrated severe aortic stenosis with a very high mean gradient and peak gradient. Uh, the purpose of the pre 
uh, procedure images that we've taken here at the lab are just to make sure that there's no uh, surprises or acute contraindications to proceed with the procedure. So as we can see, we see that the LV function is still normal. There's maybe uh, just a trivial, trivial pericardial effusion. Um, there's no um, okay. you know, new valve uh, regurgitation. Uh, and if we're looking at the LV function, again, normal LV function, of course LVH, mitral nodal calcification, aortic valve calcification, uh, but no surprises. Additionally, we make sure that there is no pericardial effusion at the start of the procedure. Uh, and since uh, no surprises were found on the echo side, she's uh, good to go. Okay. All right. We go back, uh, uh, continue our uh, presentation. Next slide. And uh, this basically uh, putting echo findings together. Next. Yeah. So uh, basically, from uh, to show you the portion in aorta, we'll show you the peripheral arterial axis. These are the STS and the Euro score and mortality. So this patient uh, uh, basically is a surgical prohibitive risk, as mentioned uh, by our very experienced surgeon uh, due to porcelain aorta, and will undergo uh, tower procedure now with uh, MAC or conscious sedation. Uh, we are very expert uh, anesthetist, Dr. Imali, and uh, they take care of it uh, with the transthoracic. Rarely we do TE in these cases. Next. And uh, now, Jason, you want to take over with the CT uh, findings? Good morning, everyone. So this patient obviously has severe calcific disease, and that extends not just to the aorta, but to the uh, aortic valve and also to the axis. You can see here the annulus. Uh, the area is about uh, 3.7 uh, centimeters or 376 millimeters. Maximum minimum is, is a little eccentric, so there's an imbalance there and some calcific nodules and, and spicules in the annulus that we need to be very wary of. Perimeter is 70.6. Uh, and also the annular angle is 65 degrees. So that means it's a fairly horizontal aorta. Uh, so we'll actually need to be using the flex system here to deploy this valve squarely in the, in the middle of the aortic valve apparatus. Next slide. You can see here the sinuses of Alsalva are not especially generous. The mean uh, sinus of Valsalva is around 27, 28, so that's not particularly generous for this valve sizing. STJ height 21 and ascending aorta is generous enough uh, for us to deploy this valve safely. Coronary height's around 14 to 18, so not a concern in today's case. Next slide. So here to show you the access, the right iliofemoral system was severely diseased. You can see that the uppermost uh, panel there on the left side gives a very severe uh, calcific rim around on the right side, and you'll see that on the fluoro shots. The left side was borderline but uh, doable. So we actually went up the left side with the main sheath. Next slide. Look very calcific there. Very calcific. <laughs> it was a struggle. I'll come to that in a moment. Yeah. You can see here by all measures, this is uh, Edward Sapien uh, valve 23 size. Um, next slide. So to summarize the case. Yeah. So basically, we go ahead now. Uh, on the MAC uh, with the left uh, uh, percutaneous uh, approach. Uh, uh, the, you show the arterial now? Yeah. Yeah, here. Yep. Yep. Just to show, uh, so further considerations in this case was whether we should actually do an embolic protection device. The innominate, you can see there is severely calcific where it joins the aorta. And we felt the calcific disease of these vessels was prohibitive for an embolic protection device. We chose the S3 so uh, we could use a no-touch technique around the aorta. To show you quickly the access, you can see there on the right side where we're getting the small sheath, that severe calcific lesion. It's far more stenosed than it appears. We then went up and over, and you can see here on the left side we have a wire down. We're looking at the calcium in the access vessel. You can see spotty calcium there. We perked, uh, and it was actually challenging then to get the sheath up. We had to uh, pre-dilate the vessel. Uh, and actually lubricate the sheath with rotoglide to get the sheath up. And you can see here, this is an annular shot. I just want to also show you that the aorta itself is somewhat tortuous. There's a few bends that we had to navigate, and it was challenging to get the sheath up. Yep. And even we have seen many of these calcific vessels, the, cal the vessel hugs on the sheath. Even you have put yes. the sheath in, it's not no immune that your valve is going to go. It will Absolutely. still can give a lot of resistance there. We're Indeed. anticipating a, yeah. a, a bit of a push to get the valve up through the sheath uh, on this particular case. Okay, we are ready. Yeah, I just need to clarify yeah. that there is absolute contraindication for use of right. any embolic uh, system here because it's uh, uh, incredible high mm -hmm. risk for the uh, 
uh, causing embolization during placement of the embolic protection system, no matter what it is. And all such cases were excluded by the embolic protection trial. So although one looks at it and indeed says, oh, you know, I don't prevent stroke, <laughs> unfortunately, we don't have the means to safely do so. So I'll be very clear about that. There is contraindication for that. Now, that's a very interesting point which uh, George has uh, brought, that uh, one, the CT scan, during the CT scan itself, we knew the arch vessels were very tortuous. Uh, in that kind of uh, many cases where we know the CT scan, based on the CT scan that we are able to do the sentinel device, we will still do an arch aogram and then make a decision whether it is worth um, doing the sentinel device in the case. Now, in this patient also what happened is she has a rise in the creatinine uh, compared to the last couple of weeks that she has been. Today, the creatinine is 1.7. So that's the reason, since the CT scan already had excluded her, we did not do an arch aogram to make any more decision about Sentinel. Yeah, but I mean, we are prospectively looking for it. We have established the protocol uh, that these patients, uh, we should, appropriate cases should get Sentinel. Uh, although we know that uh, various meta-analysis is still questioning the overall device uh, uh, utility, but FDA has approved it. But appropriate cases, I uh, still feel the utility out of it because it will as long as you are not creating the emboli from the device placement uh, yes it takes a little more procedural time of five plus minutes hopefully very small amount of dye but uh, but ultimately it will decrease your stroke rate by 30 40 percent uh, and uh, that actually has been shown may not be statistically significant but uh, relative reduction is always there george you you wrote down the editorial last year i mean the meta-analysis yeah, last year in Jack intervention. Yeah, we have to be very clear about that. Uh, the number one issue with embolic protection devices is the safety. You have to be able to place them there in an easy and safe way. You cannot struggle there. Why? Because data are somewhat positive, not the super positive anybody wants. And they're the foundation of the devices, and also, I think, for the approval, that's what uh, uh, happened. Um, it was, they were very safe. So essentially the thinking from the panel and everyone was that if they can prevent some emboli, any emboli going up to the brain is no good. But if the device is safe, then uh, you know the device could be approved. Uh, from then on, how to incorporate it in the clinical, um, day, everyday clinical practice, well, that's, a, that's a different story. And that's what um, you know, we've been doing here is a pre-screen by, uh, by the scan. We consider it for everyone and we pre-screen by the scan for those who are obvious, uh, obvious uh, uh, contraindications. And then again, we, we screen with a, a orthogram in the, um, during the case and exclude those that uh, we feel that uh, uh, there is excess calcium at the takeoff of the inaminate and the carotids. And only the takeoff is at marrow. That's another important point. A lot of people are asking and uh, telling us regarding a 80 percent uh, a bifurcation carotid stenosis or an occlusion carotid or something like that, where those are, are, have nothing to do. The, the embolic protection devices only deal with the, um, with the ostia and the proximal part <coughs> of the, the carotid the arteries and the innominate. And they take into account the uh, tortuosity as well as the calcification and Should exclude those cases, particularly when you have both tortuosity and calcification at the takeoff. Hemo. Uh, yeah. No need to even try that. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, the, as a part of the tower workup, we have added that uh, they take a picture uh, also with a CT scan uh, that uh, take the yeah. for the great vessels because well, some change. Yes, that's an interesting point. We extend the CT scan window just to include the shoulders of the patient, right. and that is, in essence, includes the the first five or ten, uh, uh, you know, the first few centimeters. I would say a couple of centimeters of the. Uh, take off of the inaminate and the carotid in order to see any proximal tortuosity because that's all we care and that's all we fear in this case. Okay. So you see the hemodynamics patient yeah. does have aortic stenosis even on our hemo. So yeah, initially so I think when you were talking on the fluoro screen on the side you saw that I had to do some manipulation uh, of the AR2. So you know to cross a valve we, we use AR2 and then uh, the glide wire, straight glide wire, which was easy to cross, but then the AR2 was probably under uh, some kind of a papillary muscle, so we had to get the pigtail, 
I just uh, um, see the now the pigtail is in the apex. So we had to do that with the pigtail. We'll go in. Yeah. So now we have confida wire. Yeah, this yeah. is the confida wire. Yeah, another so very can important see the is in the safety apex. issue, particularly with this uh, calcification and the very stiff vessels. Uh, the uh, delivering the catheters initially and all that, or not the easiest one to manipulate, and uh, they no need to push and take risks with the stiff wires before you have safely get a pigtail in. Uh, and again, you can see from the horizontal aortic valve in combination with a non-distensible aorta how difficult it is to manipulate these wires live. You have to be very, very experienced to get those safely. And this, what you see right now, is the absolute safe uh, placement of the confida wire with multiple loops in the true apex. Okay. So we just uh, pre BAV is a 18. Yeah. Zmat. Wow. Only 18. <laughs> I know <laughs> yeah. that we are also asking. I mean, like, whoa. We'll make sure you inflate fully. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are doing a pediatric balloon valve plastic. That's right. Okay, well, let's see. No, no pacing, just go up. Good. So the second syringe going in, nice expansion of the balloon. Okay, once the, the balloon has deflated, I'm just going to, okay, we are holding the sheet. Okay, sheet good. No suture. Yeah, hold the sheet in place and watch it while you don't lose the place. So the difficult part of this is in any exchange that you do, there's always a chance a wire may dislodge. Okay. You have to actively, uh, operator has to actively surveil that possibility. Yeah. Um, and we're keep the confidence stable. We're checking the sheet is kinked or not at this point. Okay. Okay. Now we're we just want making sure the sheet is okay, no kink, looks good. Yeah, looks okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's get the valve in. Even if a uh, little bit of AI is not an issue here, no, uh, we second, just have to go just forward. Just yeah. yeah, can we go to Put hemodynamics a little bit, please? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You can see that. that the the pressure now is so uh, about 120 over 40, over no, 45. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess it was button. about okay. uh, uh, So before you go, uh, go up with before. the valve, always make sure your valve placement is very good, <laughs> that you have this uh, skirt. Skirt is facing, that means the facing down, the white. OK, very good. So we're going in with a Sapien 23. Yes, yes. So, uh, Stapien 23, if you see here, this uh, essentially includes a balloon catheter, which is, in the, uh, which is inside the flex catheter. The flex catheter will take the balloon with the valve that's crimped on the balloon through the iota up to the aortic valve. And what you have is this is the large wheel, which helps for the flex catheter to be flexing. We are very important in this particular case to do the no-touch technique that when you are... Uh, going across the aortic arch that you are flexing so the valve will be in the center of the aorta not touching the wall and then you have the fine adjustment wheel and the lock that locks uh, on and off the balloon mm. which actually essentially carries the valve okay let's carry on now we're going to see how easy or this not is so the easy is to loader catheter i'm going in you want to go below yeah see, uh, let's see how if it goes it goes yeah, just, uh, just always keep the wire, uh, keep an eye on the wire the though. That's the first spot. In the LV. It's gone. We're okay. We'll be okay now. Yeah. So you can see that. This is called a python. Good. You really have to have good yeah. breakfast yeah. before yeah. you do this case. Okay, now we have to I got it. place the valve. Yep. Now come this way. <coughs> yeah. So now what we are doing here would be the valve alignment. Essentially what you're going to do is unlock so the balloon will be free to move in the flex catheter. So what I'm going to do is just pull the balloon back. You see that? Balloon is coming back. Balloon should come inside the valve. This is where we are. We lock. So now the flex catheter will be moving. Take this fine adjustment. So the oh balloon keeps so coming really. back. Right. The balloon is nice inside. Oh so yeah, we don't I have like parallax. It. Right, you we can happy. Go a little bit, uh, a, a little bit. Uh, uh lock and lock, so if any kind of tension is released. That's and good. now, I'm what I'm going to do, the key and the most important part here, use the flex wheel, which is here. So I'm going to flex. 
while and advancing your yeah, pulse rate so that does not touch the aorta you know these uh, the step which uh, dr keeney just showed in their new design which is the sapien ultra actually will come fixed uh, and this step will be removed and now you have to make more flex so it does more not flex touch flex but they also pull yeah. a little look at that wire. Yeah. nice and pull the wire a little bit yeah. and nice. that's uh, to me i think that's the region for the lowest cva rates uh, which have been shown in the tower trial uh, using uh, the sapien uh, with three device a long way off because it's just uh, not I'm going touching the uh, no touch technique i'm going to unflex a little bit yeah. and you see yeah. three the key point here is also the wire the wire is very important the way the third person is holding jk was holding yeah. the wire do not let the wire come back go forward nothing so he is holding the wire here is advancing and i was flexing so very important now what you have to do is now you can bring the valve in position you have to unlock mm -hmm. and then bring the flex catheter back this is I how you do that yeah don't forget yeah. flex catheter step. back so the balloon is exposed one more extra. nice yep all right okay so Very the lock good. again you go went down too much yeah so you can use this uh, fine adjustment wheel so it's like a screwdriver if you want to go in i'm going to pull back because i want the ba balloon back uh, it's good yes. now i think we are okay yeah good so our goal should be 60 40 yeah. or you want 70 30 no 60 40 i think 60 40 is reasonable here yeah 60 yeah. 60, 60 into 40 the LV. LV. Yeah. 40, no, no. 40 in the LV. Okay, ready? We have to pace 180. Who's, who was the pacer? And when you pace, you always make sure your blood pressure goes down to 40. It is. Inject. The balloon is up. Okay, stop pacing. Yeah, it's going to go in a bit. Yeah, I have to go in. Agree? Yeah. I can just say that normally okay, we try to be in the right yeah, side. That's great. I went in. Yeah. Some die. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, great. Up a tiny bit, I think. Okay, now we good. Agree? Yep. Okay. Pace. Looking good ready. now. We are not ready. Right. Inject. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, what do you think? We stop. Yep. We stop pacing. Now Looking everybody good. agrees because th th these are the one or two steps which we use uh, before we go on final. Yeah. Because okay. we don't, uh, you know, many times people do a partial inflation, then ingestion. Okay. Those are Let's two. Later. Yeah. Though basically, uh, really divert your mind. So 180. Way, you have made it. Uh, we need a um, little flow. blood pressure push also. No, not yet. Not no. Yet. Low. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We are pacing, and as soon as we are done inflating, that's the time you go up. One, one, five, very good and the and the angle was very very good you can see there's no parallax at all in the inflated valve good off now pacing. we can get up with the blood pacing. pressure off pacing so same as soon as you deflate you off the pacemaker i unflex everything and bring the balloon down push for the blood pressure yeah, push yeah and floor here so far so good very good and we can take a uh, uh, echo also uh, i think you not yet not yet wait you need the wire it says yeah you need the wire let the blood pressure come up uh -huh. No, why? Why? It won't move. Yeah. Well, we're not going to post that lid here. Looks good. Uh, you can take a little Gila pigtail and take out the equipment. No, no, wait, Gila, wait. Can you show us for the echo now. You could be a little closer here. So tell okay. us now because we don't want later. We want it now. Okay, okay, move it, move it. Yeah. yeah. How did it look? Well, let's put the color now. We're looking at the at the echo very nice. There is a mild. There's a little leak PVL. there. There's a mild PVL. Yeah. 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 I and see a little more. The one that you see that's more significant is through the valve. It was nominal prep. We, we went we went minus one because of this, you know, multiple calcific <laughs> spicules. Oh God! See, now we have to post again. You can add one. As soon as we do minus one, we end up post. <laughs> I think okay. you should no, post, really right? No, no, we have to post. That's no, good. You're going to post, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. There's uh, so much uh, leak yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jesus, yeah. Diastolic's the same. George, you agree, right? We are going to post now. Well, uh, yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, one yeah, area is significant yeah. PVL. Yes. 
from one area. Right. Since you started with Gila. minus one, yes, I yes, think you I have agree. to post. Yeah. Okay, give me. One. Let's go to uh, one, one, uh, one uh, add 1.5 cc. Yeah. Exactly. One, one cc means? One strong cc. Once, yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that. One strong cc we're adding. Good. All right. We are going to go back in again. Yeah. Same exercise. Now, flex well, again. Only, no. diff only difference now is in the uh, oh. the pace run now will be a little longer. You can advance the wire a little bit more. So too much of the wire is in the LBOT. Yeah. Advance the wire. It's oh going it's or no? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of oh. good. That's, that's not bad. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's not force the wire we'll too much. Loud for no. One good. Okay. Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you want to flex a little bit because you're. I did, I did. I completely oh. flexed it. Now you have to pull the wire a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. A little yeah. bit more. Yep. Yeah. See the same. The, uh, dis the dot, the distal dot of the balloon is below the Can valve. Can we go to a view that uh, the real view that was no parallax in the other time, in the valve? Okay. Yeah, very good. Much no better. No parallax. Yeah, that's okay, good. Okay, 180. Yeah. Come up a bit. Let's go to full. Let's go. Show us the hemodynamics, please. Yeah. Yeah. 180 and the pressure very low. It's not as low yet. Pull back. Pull back. as a balloon. We're good. We're good. Okay. Very good. You can inflate this. And this is a real, real pressure. Run, good. The pacing run is going to be very, very long in this case until the balloon deflates okay, and good. It comes out. Stop pacing. Stop pacing. Very good. Okay. Blood pressure up again. Oh. Pressure is good. Pressure is good. Very good. Okay. All right. I think you should uh, remove the equipment anyhow, so you can. We are done uh, here. We're not going to dilate anymore. Yeah. I think uh, Echo will decide if uh, Echo shows we are not going to do aerogram because of the high creatinine, yeah. right? Yeah, that's fine. I will probably do the aerogram because you have the yeah. issue of no, the we have to show one aerogram and, yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that here. Yeah, Make one sure aerogram. Did not create you know, any other thing. One yeah. final aerogram yeah. would be good, yeah. and the viewers would like to see autogram yes. as well. Yes. Yes. More important. So the questions we are getting is that uh, is the confida wire exclusively used in all cases of tiver in our lab? Uh, yes. Uh, answer. Any question is so yes. Let's ask our fellow Farhan. What do you think? Every case? Yes. That's every case that we do. Now, uh, even now the balloon valve plastics. Yeah. We start using in BAV. All the wire is very expensive. It's like six times more than your uh, stiff wire. But uh, but clearly it's tolerating well. Less perforation, so that's the big advantage. That uh, wa jet is oh gone, no, right? It looks better. Well, jet is gone, particularly we don't have the, the Doppler. Very yeah. good. good. Uh, now, but even with Doppler, it's very minimal now. Yeah, looks good. Looks better, right, Gila? Yeah. Okay, better. good. Okay. We're done. Uh, and no pericardial effusion. Very no good. effusion. Yeah. Shows the no effusion. No effusion. Very good. Let Excellent. Go Beautiful. Effusion. Yeah. Yeah, nothing much. Nothing. Zero. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, nice. Excellent. So minimal echo approach, minimal transthoracic echo approach, not so much invasiveness. That's really good. You can see the um, um, the final result, a very good projection, relatively. I understand uh, here. Uh, I think we should be doing less manipulation on the iota. Oh, no, you went into the, the LV. Manager. Very good. Let's do a pullback gradient there. Yeah, it's already in the LV. Yeah. Okay. The video just rather than putting another catheter, we'll yeah. just do this. Yeah. Just do pull back gradient and remove the other one. Okay. How? Yeah. Pull back gradient. Yeah. Yeah, remove the wire though. Uh, the, 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 the other wire. Uh, confida. Just wire only for the time being. Good. All right. Let's go to okay, hemodynamics. Okay. New technique please. of uh, pull back. Let's go to hemodynamics, please. Okay. Okay. Let's let it stabilize a little bit. Yep. Okay, yeah, pull back now. Floro. Good. No gradient. Yeah, <laughs> zero. Good, but we do one autogram. It yeah. came back up. Yeah, yeah come back gradient. a little bit. It went all the way. I don't know where it is. No, we here. Nice. Yeah, here. It's coming out. Okay, yeah, good. good. Beautiful. Yeah. Ready? Five okay. cc, please. We don't need to be for so, ten. so ten high for mag. Ten. We ten can for go ten. a little lower mag. Yeah, lower a little mag. lower mag for, a, for mag. a panoramic, panoramic yeah. aerogram. All right. 
Panoramic is what a gram lakh. What panoramic does? You need a telescope to see. Okay, okay, okay. All right, in between. That's from the moon. Okay, let's do it. to be a moon view. Okay, inject. Nice. Nice. No aogram. All right. No AI. AI for the aogram. No AI. No AI, no dissection. Very good. Beautiful. With that, now the big work by our by Jason and the fellow. Farhan <laughs> to work on the groin and meanwhile we go to our uh, point presentation. Very good. This is great. This yeah. is uh, uh, excellent. We continue with the uh, uh, with uh, with a clo groin closure a little bit yep. while uh, uh, Dr. Sharma will talk to us about issues related to this case and teaching points. Yeah, latest uh, point next. Uh, that is because remember the tower has been hailed as a more expensive technology over surgical valve replacement and also the profit margin for the institution because of the cost involved. Biggest cost, as we all know, is the cost of the valve, which is between 30 to 32,000, compared to surgical aortic valve, which is about 5,000. So, so clearly, for the tower to be cost effective, you had to take care of the six time cost, uh, whether by decreasing the length of stay and ICU stage and decreasing the complication. Next. So basically, we have uh, in last, uh, I'm just giving the data of last two years. This is the data from the third Tavi uh, from a high risk uh, uh, pivotal trial, uh, basically showing cost effectiveness of the transcatheter valve. It was kind of equal, but really it has come to the real, uh, I would say, once we start using the valve in more intermediate cases. Next. And that is where I have put it together. The past, tr the tower procedure cost past was high versus sour. That is higher device cost. Higher neurologic complication, higher vascular complication, higher resource utilization, early experience, and cost of the tower program setup. All these costed the tower programs uh, and so. As you know, at present, 456 cath labs in America are doing the tower procedure. Overall, 1,600 do the intervention. So only about penetration is about 26, 28 percent. Now, what has happened now? because of the tower technology and the understanding of the device uh, and the procedure is the present. That is, it's still higher cost of the device, which we know, but lower neurologic complications compared to surgery. Every trial has shown similar or lower. Lower vascular complication, shorter ICU stay, lower length of stay earlier, and fast track. Some of the many patients are discharged in 26, uh, 24 to 36 hours. That means next day and then higher discharge to home and return to work. Very important what studies also have shown, the patients coming off the tower versus surgery, more patients go home r compared to surgery where more patients go to subacute rehabilitation, SAR. So clear difference. And then the whole question comes, will whether the tower have a lower readmission. There is some data to support, but not universally. Next. Now these are the partner 2A trial, as we remember. Death or stroke at two years clearly were identical. Of, of for the transfemoral, have a lower mortality. Other issues were vascular complication higher with the tower, pacemaker rate were equal, and kidney injury was lower. Next. Now, this is the Sertavi trial. Basically, the similar message all stroke, disabling stroke was significantly lower with the tower, but other endpoints of the death or stroke were identical. Next. And these are the individual same, clearly the higher pacemaker, permanent pacemaker with the core valve in this uh, intermediate risk patient population and lower uh, fibrillation and so and so forth. Next. So clearly we know that now based on this uh, issue that now we are embarking on the low risk trial, uh, basically the partner three trial, overall 1228 patient to be randomized, transfemoral versus uh, bioprosthetic surgical valve. The primary endpoint now are the all-cause mortality, strokes, or rehospitalization at one year. Not two years or so, one year, and they included the rehospitalization along with the uh, various registry and uh, understanding the CT imaging for the leaflet sub-study. Next, uh, the no longer age cutoff now. Next, same thing for the low-risk uh, uh, Metronic uh, Evolute trial. Next slide. Uh, basically, it's again 1,200 patient, but here, Primary endpoint is the death or major stroke at two years. So clearly, it looks like that partner three data may be present, uh, may be available for us in first quarter of 2019, and uh, maybe one year later of the um, Medtronic uh, Tower low risk trial. Next, so basically, first time 
uh, it has come now to the limelight that if you got better with the tower, now are you cost effective compared to surgery and the data was presented just uh, a few weeks ago in the uh, TCT trial by David Cohen uh, from the partner 2A and Sapien 3 intermediate risk registry uh, the showing that where we are in this field. Next. And clearly, the, they, they took the patients from partner 2A and Sapien intermediate re registry, overall about 3,000 patients. Next. And basically, whole idea was uh, that to get all the capture, all the cost in hospital, follow up, up to two years. Next. And first is the partner 2A randomized trial. Next. And basically, you can see here, procedure duration was lower with the tower. Length of stay was almost three days. Uh, three to uh, three plus days actually four days uh, four sorry 4.5 days lower uh, and of course pacemaker was not different between two but clearly they have a lower uh, procedure duration lower length of stay next and subsequently there was no difference in hospitalization and then uh, overall hospital days were lower and rehab to see the senior nursing facility uh, days were much lower with a tower versus surgery. And this is the randomized trial of 2,000 patients. Next. And what it lead to? The overall cost. Index hospital cost. Next. And you can see index hospital cost is much higher with a tower because of the val cost of 30,000. And then with the, in the surgery, the val cost is only 5,000. Now the non-procedural, next, clearly is much lower. Why? Lower ICU stay, lower length of stay. Next. And then MD fees, I think it's probably difference with anesthesia. That maybe <laughs> may the higher surgical fee surgeon charge more uh, for the surgical valve compared to the tower interventionist. Maybe we should have, uh, we should be charging a little more also. I want that. Uh, yeah. For the MD that. fee. Next. So, therefore, as I mentioned, the big difference is the cost. Next. Uh, so, it? now if you say the time interval, the hospital days. is done. So, now you are discharged to 30 days. The blue bar is the tower, red is the surgery in every aspect. You can see your cost after the discharge is lower with the tower group versus surgery and largely because of the patients going back home early, less frequent visits and so and so forth. Next. So this overall there was about 6,000 cost advantage of the tower at two years compared to surgery. Not in house. In house were about uh, 15,000 lower. Uh, I mean higher within the tower but clearly low. Overall at two years was little benefit. Next. And then, of course, you go with the quality of life, and it turns out to be that uh, the, from that point of view, tower did well uh, also with the cost effectiveness. Next, then went to the Sapien group. Remember Sapien intermediate group, which they compare the registry data with the surgical data of the partner 2A. So this actually in the original paper showed lower mortality compared to surgical AVR, which was the group of the partner 2A. Next, and in this case also, you have a lower Tower duration, lower length of stay, almost like five days, no change in pacemaker. Next, same thing, rehospitalization was even lower and the rehab days was significantly lower. Clearly, that with the Sapien valve, why? Because XT was 18 to 20 French, Sapien 3 became about 16 to 18 French. Clearly, lower trauma, lower early ambulation, early discharge led to a big difference. Next. Uh, in terms of the overall cost at one year that you can see there is almost a difference of 15,000 in favor of uh, Sapien 3 tower compared to surgical valve replacement of partner 2A. That's not a randomized but clearly then also decrease in length of stay of six plus days. Uh, that's the big driving uh, force which will difference which will take away the cost of the high tower uh, valve. Next. And similar data next. And therefore, economic implication where the, ta the tower is going to make a difference is next is that see the unchanged survival versus the lower is improved survival. High value of the uh, basically of the device cost effectiveness will be that you have a lower mortality, improved survival over the surgical valve replacement. And of course, it uh, continues, uh, you know, overall difference in length of stay. And so that's where the really difference will come in favor of the tower in coming years. Next. So therefore, if I sum up with improved tower device technology, lower procedural complications, and adoption of fast track pathways for discharge, tower is overall cost effective technology for management of intermediate risk severe AS patients. Also, early discharge to home and early return to work are favorable. Now, as you know, 
the Medicare MSDRG, which is 267 and uh, uh, 256 and 57, uh, incorporate various comorbidities and whether patient has open cut down and so. So basically, what is happening is because of comorbid conditions, overall reimbursement to the institution for the tower patient is much higher than surgical because high risk surgical patients are going for the tower. So it has clear became that a higher tower, uh, the re DRG reimbursement is much higher than surgery because of the comorbid MCCs, majority of those patients are going for the tower compared to surgery. You want to comment on it? No, no, I agree with you that a significant number of these high uh, risk patients now benefit from tower versus surgery and therefore, you know, they can benefit from all these advantages that tower presents compared to uh, conventional surgery. And the other question always comes that until last year, the overall there was no decrease in the surgical valve uh, procedure in America, despite the tower getting the momentum, uh, because we are more for the intermediate and high risk, uh, you know, high risk patients and so. Since the intermediate risk has come in, the STS registry now showing there's some dent in the surgical valve replacement, but clearly much more growth in the intermediate risk. Uh, uh, yeah, I think th the findings that you're uh, mentioning is similar to what Europeans saw a few years ago. I think that we are at the cross line here and the number of probably uh, surgical AVR within the next few years is going to drop. The number of uh, towers is going to exponentially increase. Okay, the next uh, uh, the take home message is very important next is the real cost effectiveness of tower in low to intermediate risk AS patient will lie in overall improving the quality of life parameter, lowering mortality and morbidity and lowering the device cost more. Uh, how would you lower the device cost? More transcatheter valve come in the market. We always, we learn from the stent technology. When you have a two stents in the market, they remain, the price remain 2,500, 2,800. Then we got the Metronic, you know, this was initially with the Bo Abbott and Boston Scientific. When the Metronic came, all the stent prices became 1,500. So that's, I, we expect, will happen because that is the biggest cost of the device at present. And of course, uh, we'll just need to see how the market trend going to happen when we get the new valves. None will come this year, but next year uh, we expect to, to get the Lotus and the Portico uh, valve in the uh, clinical market. Next. So therefore, I'll take uh, three questions. The following are the favorable uh, component of lower tower procedure cost versus sur surgery except, means what is wrong? Lower length of stay, lower ICU stay days, lower AKI, and lower need for permanent pacemaker. As we know, with the tower, if anything, there is a higher need for permanent pacemaker. Next. Answer is D. Next question. The following are the true statement regarding two years outcome of tower versus tower in the partner two-way trial, except similar mortality in tower versus uh, su surgery, similar CV in tower versus uh, surgical valve, lower rehospitalization in tower versus surgery, and similar pacemaker need in TAVR versus surgery. As you can see, one A, B, and C were all similar, but clearly hospitalization in the uh, partner 2A trial was identical at two years in the CPN3 registry was lower. Next. So the answer will be C. Next. And that is the following the primary endpoints of the partner 3 trial of low risk AS patient. Partner 3 trial. Death and CV at two years. Death, CV and rehospitalization at one year. Death, CV and rehospitalization at two years. And death, CV at one year. And answer is clearly as we see B. And we, in order for this, uh, this activity will be is sponsored by Edward uh, Life Sciences and will be a CME event uh, which will be posted and we'll uh, put another seven more questions because CME require that total 10 questions pre and post need to be answered and uh, will be in informing uh, to all of our uh, viewers about uh, getting the CME credit of this today's webcast. Okay, where are we now? Uh, just well, let's just go back to the closure, closure the fluoride, of the case. The fluoride, please. So what we've done here is we've changed out our wires. We actually have a stiff wire up the left side. So in case of any trouble, as I said, there was a uh, moderate stenosis in the uh, left uh, iliac that we had to deal with. So we're very cautious of that DSA shot to make sure there's no perforation problems. The section you can see here, nice runoff, no perforation. We then advance that sheath over the V18 wire, down. We still have an anterograde and a retrograde wire at this point. We've fully removed the sheath, deployed the per-closed sutures, and you can see we've already got good closure. We're still cleaning up here. I uh, just have to take the last wire out from the uh, 
controversial side, but closure. nice closure. But it looks this very good. Perfect closure, Jason. All right. Great. So with that, we end today's. Uh, so I think we uh, like to uh, uh, thank the uh, operating team, Dr. Shama, Dr. Kinney, Dr. Kovacic, Dr. Phil Sufi, and the anesthesiologists, as well as the Echo, Echo Lab team. And of course, thank all the viewers for logging on to cclive.org to see uh, uh, our today's case. Again, the case will be archived with a full pre and post 10 questions for a full CME credit very soon at the same website, cccliveCases.org. Let me remind you that the structural live cases are every other month. So the next time we'll be together with the same time anywhere you are around the world on 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in New York on the 9th of January. Uh, we'll see you then.